Welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. And today I'm at the Jim Beam Distillery. The Jim Beam Distillery was founded by Jakob Böhm, a German who came to America and started making his own whiskey here in the Bourbon County. Um, the distillery is actually not named after Jakob Böhm, uh, which he, he renamed himself to uh, Jacob Beam, but the, his grand-grand-grandson uh, in the fourth generation the James Beam and this is actually he was called Jim so it's called the Jim Beam distillery. Uh, today the distillery is in, is in the hands of Fred No, who is the seventh generation in the family and he runs the distillery in the old tradition with the old mash bill and let's find out what this is all about. I'm standing right next to the mash shop where all the grain is put in. On the far right we have the corn, in the middle we have the malted barley and on the left we have the rye. This is all being cooked at about 215 to 220 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, this is roughly, let's say, yeah, 101 to 105 degrees Celsius at a bit of overpressure. Um, after it's been cooked, so all the starch is split up for the sugar and then it's being pumped up uh, pumped over into the fermenters the yeast is added and fermentation takes place I'm standing next to the big fermenters the Jim Beam plant here has 19 fermenters with a capacity of 45,000 gallons and out of these 45,000 gallons we have 600 gallons of yeast and the whole mash during the fermentation process is cooled down to um, 92 degrees Fahrenheit that is roughly about 33 degrees Celsius and that lets the least develop in a good way so we get a nice 10% uh, alcoholic beer that is then pumped into the beer well and then ready for fermentation. I'm standing right next to the Jim Beam column still. This is the first still and the column still is six stories tall and inside it is copper. The copper is very important because there are catalytic reactions going on and making the bourbon smoother. After the column still you have a spirit at 125 proof that is 62.5 ABV and after this first distillation the spirit goes down into the basement where we have the doubler and the doubler does the second distillation again with copper and that takes it up to 135 proof and that is 67.5 ABV and this is then called the high wines uh, yeah. and this, these high wines is white whiskey and this is ready to be put into the barrels for maturation so we got a good bourbon out of it so now we're at the Jim Beam warehouse and this warehouse here is nine st stories tall. It's one of the many warehouses Jim Beam owns. They have in total 1.8 million barrels in the property of the Jim Beam company. And if you look at one of these barrels, they're all labeled the right way. You have the company James B. Beam Distilling Corporation. Then you have Bourbon Whiskey in it. This here is a bit scribbled up. Uh, it says that it's been uh, bottled at the right strength, uh, filled at the right strength, the cask. Then you have the distillery number, which is 230. And the last year is the code for the date. It reads like that. You have uh, 14, stands for 2014. D is the fourth letter in the alphabet, so it's the fourth month. This means it's April and the 23rd. So it's 23rd of April 2014. Um, the warehouse is um, not heated or not chilled, so they all mature in a very natural way and you don't have any warehouse rotation. So the different whiskies in different levels mature in a different way because the, the heat rises up in the warehouse, so the, the bourbon in the very top layers mature faster. And there is a, a so-called sweet spot. It's in the fifth layer 
and there you get the best bourbons that are now being bottled in the small batches and the super premium bourbons. So that's, uh, that's the secret behind the maturation in the warehouses. This is one, one really cool thing here. Uh, this is the 13th million cask that has been filled at the Jim Beam Distillery in 2014. Uh, it was signed by um, Fred No, the master distiller, by his son Freddie No, who is already working at the distillery and learning from his father and all the steps inside the distillery. Then Baker Beam is his cousin and Jim Beam No is another cousin that works at the distillery. And this cask shows how strong the Beam brand actually is. You have, if you have 13 million casks filled with your whiskey, then you know you are a global brand. We're now at the dumping floors where all the barrels come in that are ready for bottling. These are, here are Knob Creek uh, barrels that are about nine years old, at least nine years old. Uh, what these guys here do is they drill the bung hole out, put in the breathing straw, and the barrels are then put on top and the whiskey runs out. While the whiskey runs out, it's being filtered through a metal plate with small holes in it. And then uh, all the, the charcoal that is loosened up during the maturation process also comes out and is being kept into these trays. The whiskey now goes down to bottling and is being filled into the bottle. So this is your unfiltered whiskey for you. Mm. Oh yeah. Bit strong but also very strong with flavor. This is where the empty barrels are ending up. Um, they are, get a new bunghole and then they are being rolled into the truck, stored there and internationally shipped. The Beam Suntory group is pretty big, so um, there are a lot of takers like Lafroy, Highland Park. They're really keen on the, the fresh barrels that just had the bourbon in, and they still have a lot of vanilla and oak notes in them. So I'm here at the Knob Creek single barrel line, and the cool thing is every visitor can bottle their own bottle. So let's do this. First step is to rinse the bottle and you rinse it actually with whiskey, with bourbon, um, so you don't dilute your whiskey with uh, anything. And you also got a new clean bottle. So I'm gonna label this here, so we can see my bottle being filled and um, labeled. Thank you, sir.
Thank you. Did you enjoy that last bottle? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> so that's now dipping with wax. And you can even have your own signature on the bottle. You can do your, your fingerprint on the top. Thank you very much. So this is your Knob Creek, single barrel, individually made for me. And I'm gonna take that home with me. Very nice. Here I'm standing in front of a quality storage house. Um, that stores two bottles for every bottling they make. And that stores it for two years. So the Jim Beam distillery can prove, yes, this batch was right and they can pull a quality sample from every batch they made two years ago. This here is Fred No. He is the seventh generation of the family and he is the master distiller right now at the distillery. And mm. he will talk us through uh, the small batch bourbons. And yeah, thank you for having us. Our pleasure, Benedict. Glad for you to be here in Claremont with me today. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. It's, Kentucky is such a nice country. We've traveled up and down. And yeah, so I have a few questions for you. Um, sure. One question would be, um, I've talked about that Jakob Boom, the, your very, very old grandfather, <laughs> um, yep. was from Germany, called Jakob mm -hmm. Boom. Have you ever thought about making a bottling for Germany called Jakob Boom? <laughs> no, we never have really thought about that at this point, but... Now that you say that, we may have to do a commemorative bottle for old. Uh, that would be cool. My great, 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 great grandfather <laughs> Jacob Boom. Because we do have roots in Germany, we don't really know exactly where, but uh, the yeah. family did come from Germany many, many, many years ago. Jim Beam is pretty popular in Germany. We sell a lot of your stuff, and yeah. So, so what are we having today? Today we're going to look at our small batch bourbon collection which were developed by my father, Booker No. And the first we will look at is Basil Hayden, uh, this particular bottle right here. Okay. Basil Hayden is named for the distiller who started the old granddad distillery back in the 1800s. Oh, okay. That's where the name comes from. This bourbon, we double the amount of rye that we put into the mash bill. So we have corn, rye, and malted barley. This one has a much higher percentage of rye than the other three in the collection. So I'm looking at, uh, I see here, eight years old, so I'm looking at a bit of more spicy and more... more Spicier, a little drier. The drier, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. You know, this one is very, it's 40% ABV. Uh, this one is very easy on the palate, mm -hmm. which we're seeing a lot of folks who are just starting to experiment with bourbon, mm -hmm. enjoy the flavor of Basil Hayden because it is such an easy to drink bourbon. I think you're gonna see it has nice aroma, a good body, a real click, quick, clean finish that doesn't overpower your palate. And uh, people who are just starting to experiment with bourbon a little bit have uh, enjoyed it quite a bit. I mean, you see you've got some nice good golden amber color to it. Oh yeah, that's what I like about the bourbon. Yeah, you have no cool. coloring and still you have that great color. Yeah, when it, all the color it gets comes from the charred white oak barrel that we store the bourbon in. Uh, when we distill it, it's crystal clear. You saw on your tour, yeah. you know, the white dog. I had a bit of white dog <laughs> and I have to say, I think bourbon the, is all about maturation. I think the barrel, <laughs> The barrel helps it quite a bit. I mean, yeah. this one uh, Definitely need a barrel. has good aging. When you nose Ooh. it, you get pick up the spiciness of oh, yeah. the increased amount of rye. But it's, I, I know, it's a spiciness, but it's not as as attacking like like any. I had a few others, but All right. That's why I say good. it's a very easy to drink bourbon mm -hmm. because it's easy on the the senses. The nose, the taste, the finish. 
So it's uh, 80 proof, 40 percent. 80 proof, 40 40 percent, 80 proof. Okay. You see the spiciness? Definitely. Oh, now now there comes the spiciness. And then when you swallow it, oh, it's a bit glowing. Mm -hmm. And then the finish mm -hmm. is very quick. You know, it doesn't overpower your palate. Yeah. Uh, now, now there comes a bit of dryness, but I like it. Maru hmm. That's one that we're seeing quite a bit of growth on here in the United States. Okay. Uh, people are discovering Basil Hayden and liking it. Quite a unique design of bottle. Mm -hmm. You have that copper band around it. Mm -hmm. But I like it. I really like it. Yeah. It's a good bourbon. I like the small batch bourbons a lot. Yeah, this one is, is doing very, very well with very little marketing support. Uh, it's not one that we've advertised a lot. This one has really grown a lot from word of mouth. Oh, uh, Mixology folks around the country have discovered it and are using it in cocktails and on the rocks, neat. You know, it's a very versatile bourbon that folks uh, really have grown to with increased amount of females that are getting into bourbon now. Women in bourbon uh, are becoming very popular here in the States. Yeah. Basil Hayden is a favorite of a lot of the ladies who are discovering bourbon and liking it. Okay, very nice, very nice. Okay, uh, I have another question for you. Okay. So, um, for the product range, we see uh, a lot of increase. Like you have, you now have the small batch bourbons. Mm -hmm. You have liqueurs with honey and mm -hmm. and other stuff. Um, so your 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 product range is growing. Is there any reason behind that? Well, I think people who are discovering bourbon, for there's a couple reasons, and people are discovering you know, how versatile bourbon is, and the people who are into bourbon like new things. Okay. And we're trying new things and exploring new avenues, you know, with the infused stuff. Mm -hmm. As you say, the liqueurs, the honey bourbons, the cherries, you know, this has brought people to the bourbon category that maybe never looked at bourbon before. You know, this is a totally new segment in the bourbon category with the infusions and then the old classic cocktails are getting people looking at bourbon more yeah i mean in the past when people said whiskey they only thought of scotch now when people say whiskey they want to say what kind of whiskey because bourbon is moving right up there with them and you know i think cocktails are helping education people Definitely. are discovering that there's a lot to bourbon and not just a shot and a beer like you know in the past yeah you know when when i thought about bourbon before i entered the whiskey business i always thought about uh i don't know a cowboy cowboy belling up to the bar <laughs> yeah in a tumbler and yeah. yeah i don't know give me a drink <laughs> just drink yeah. it now uh what's it called dusty's throat right. and then just down right. it but that's i don't know the the old school bourbon if you there's still it's, it's still a lot of heritage and i don't know there's there's a lot to it so yeah and i think education mm -hmm. you know Consumers are learning more about what they are drinking, and they are learning that bourbon has a lot to offer, and so uh, they're giving it a try. And like I say, the popularity of cocktails, whether it's the old classics or the new ingredients with fresh juices, uh, you know, mingled with the bourbons and the balance is good. You see people really enjoying, say, a Manhattan or an Old Fashioned or a Whiskey Sour, where before... A whiskey sour was just sweet and sour mix. Now the mixology folks are squeezing fresh lemons and making simple syrup, getting the balance right and making a drink really refreshing and tasty. And you see people drinking bourbon all year long, not just in the wintertime when it's cold. Okay, good. Now we're going to look at another one of the small batch bourbons, which is the number one selling super premium bourbon in the world, Knob Creek. Okay. You know, Knob Creek is named for a little area here in Kentucky where President Abraham Lincoln was born. You know, this one is, uh, is very, very popular. Uh, it, it is, like I say, the number one selling super premium bourbon. And it is really grown by leaps and bounds. This one, a lot of folks 
in the mixology world prefer it with the Manhattan cocktail because it stands up very well. Okay. This one is bottled at 50%. 50%, percent. okay. So we're stepping up mm -hmm. in strength. A bit uh, more kick behind that. A little more age on the whiskey. It's aged nine years. Nine years. So, uh, you know, you see the color is a little deeper and darker than the Basil Hayden that we looked at before. Uh, this one, when you nose it, you're going to see more of the wood coming through. Totally different nose feel than the, the Basil Hayden. Got a lot of vanilla and caramel. All right. That's coming from that white oak barrel that, <laughs> yeah, these, that these are aged in. Okay. Uh, yeah, but... And the sweetness also too some, comes through. There's some sweetness. Also get the wood now. But when you taste it, it's going to be bigger and bolder on the palate than the Basil Hayden, and the finish will linger with you much longer than the first one you tasted. Okay, longer finish then. Mm. Oh yeah. Opens up well in your mouth and Oh yeah. Okay, the fifty percent give it a little more body. Yeah. Stands more body. up. It has more more alcohol to carry the flavors. Mm. And oh yeah. Mm. It releases it longer, it stays longer in your mouth. Like I say, this one is a very, very good bourbon for the fan of the Manhattan cocktail because with the dilution and the vermouth you know, you need a bigger, bold, bolder bourbon to stand up to the vermouth and then the dilution when it's stirred and then served up. Mm, I, I can't I can't quite make out which one is, I don't know, I would say heavier because this one is spicier and this one has more of an, an oaky feel. But mm. I would say it's, even though it's as 50%, it's, I don't know, lighter than the other one. It's mm. just smooth. It's got a great bit. flavor. I mean, that's the reason. Yeah. I think it's done so well is mm -hmm. the balance, uh, the aging, you know, the, just the right amount of wood uh, with the strength. All those factors come together to create this bourbon and to make it so pleasing to the palate. Okay. Nice. Nice. So um, on the way down here, uh, I saw a plant um, called Booker No plant. Mm -hmm. um, do you have many plants around here? We have two. Two. You so. saw the one, the Booker No plant was named for my father after he passed away. Okay. That's the one that he started. He worked here at Claremont, mm -hmm. and when they purchased that facility, he went over there and started that plant and ran it until he passed away. Okay. And so they named it after Dad. Okay. Uh, so right after he passed away, he called the Booker. Used to be called just the Boston plant. Okay. Now, now it's the it's Booker No plant. Booker No plant. Oh. Yeah, I've seen seen your. Your uh, what's it called heritage tree mm -hmm. in, in the visitor center is right. Great family. <laughs> a lot, a lot yeah, of beams were involved in the a making. A lot of beams and nose. <laughs> okay, so great, great. So we're having the bakers also. Bakers, yeah, yeah. Bakers. It's named for my second cousin, okay. Baker Beam. He actually was the last beam to live in this house that we are in right now. Okay, great. Ba Baker lived here, and then he moved. He built a home and moved down the road about a mile, and he uh, he was a distillery manager here at the Claremont plant. And his bourbon is aged seven years and bottled at 53.5% or 107 proof. It's a little bigger and bolder than the Knob Creek and the Basil Hayden. You know, this one <coughs> is a very tasty bourbon. Of the four, it really stands up. You'll feel it has a different mouth feel totally. Mm -hmm. You'll feel it almost want to make you pucker up. Makes okay. you draw your mouth. Okay. You'll get the big vanilla notes in the nose, I think. Fans of cigars. People who smoke big, heavy cigars. Okay. They really like this bourbon that goes well with a big, heavy cigar. You okay, know. so is there like anything like particular that goes well with cigars? Is it like the vanilla or? I think the vanilla and then the big taste in your mouth. If you're going to smoke big, heavy cigars, mm -hmm. you need to drink a big, heavy whiskey, they tell me. The ah, guys okay, at so Cigar Aficionado Magazine, 
okay, so you're looking at a, a, a strong whiskey to, to go with the, the strong flavor right. of the cigar. And okay. if you were going to smoke a lighter mm -hmm. cigar, you might be more apt to pick Basil Hayden. Okay. They say, you know, you kind of pair your smoke with what you're drinking or oh, vice okay. versa. And this one, they tell me, you know, which I don't smoke that many cigars. <laughs> uh, me but, neither. <laughs> but they... Uh, they tell me this one is what, if you're going to smoke a big, heavy cigar, you need a big, heavy bourbon to stand up with it. And yeah, that's... It's, uh, it's interesting. You, you bring out a good product, and what people do with your product... Right. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's not up to you, but you, you realize that after a few, few years or yeah. something, oh, we sell that a lot to that market. Why is that? Oh, because it pairs well with cigars. <laughs> I think it's an experience thing. Yeah. You know, when you're drinking your bourbon, you're usually with your friends. Mm -hmm. And if you have your, your big cigar, maybe you're with your friends celebrating or enjoying and relaxing with yeah. a bourbon. And, you know, that's what they kind of, they say go together. So yeah, I'm not going to tell them they're wrong because, you know, I like the bourbon. Yeah. And it's just another good reason to enjoy Baker's bourbon. Ooh. Mm. I definitely Different feel that. Different mouthfeel. Definitely feel that there's a bit more alcohol in that. Mm -hmm. Okay. You feel it on your mouth, huh? Yeah. Makes you yeah, want to pucker up a little bit. <laughs> well, almost, I don't know if it feels like a bit, if it would be sour. I don't know. It's like a glowing or something. I can't yeah, explain it myself either. But it, <laughs> it is it's, different. I know it's when Dad. When Dad developed these bourbons, some of our competitors tried to say that it was the same bourbon, just different bottles. Really? And my dad would say they obviously haven't tasted them. <laughs> because when you've tasted three, and you can yeah, see that they're all three different. The one that stands out for me the most up till now is the, the Basil Hayden. Basil Hayden. Because of the, the strong rye. Mm -hmm. But this one, I don't know, it's still glowing a bit. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's got a long, glowing finish. But I mean, you can see where mouth, you, you still feel that if you taste it, you have that. It's like it lingers. Sweetness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that sweetness. That's where I think the guys that are, you know, you take a little sip of your bourbon, maybe take a draw off the cigar, mm -hmm. and the two, you know, the bakers are still in your mouth. And when you exhale the smoke, you know, they're still there. It doesn't go away. Like the Basil Hayden, it goes, the finish goes away real quickly. This one lingers much longer in your mouth, as you, I'm sure you. You're seeing. So. Yeah. I think many people have already found out about your small batch bourbon. And one, quest, quest, uh, one question for my father is um, Will there be any, be any, I don't know, other bottlings of the Basil Hayden Baker's Bukers? Like with the, the Knob Creek, you have the Knob Creek rye, you have uh, the small batch. I think single barrel. Mm -hmm. Single barrel. There so, possibly could be some line extensions down the road with, uh, with these. You know, the thing that we, you know, right now we're experiencing such a big demand for these that the barrels we laid down for these products, if you're going to extend the line, you have to have extra barrels. Oh, uh, yeah. So and the demand is so great at this point, we don't have a lot of extra barrels laying around to do line mm -hmm. extensions. So to do it, we would have to lay down more, let it age. Mm -hmm. And then set it aside and say, this is going to be, say, for a Booker's single barrel project or a Basil Hayden single barrel project. So, yeah. I mean, there's, you know, there's the, the recent demand influx uh, has tied our hands quite a bit <laughs> on, you know, releasing a lot more products in these same lines because these barrels age, you know, seven, eight, nine years. Yeah, it, all the years that are written down here are not just the good age, but also your reaction time to to demand increases. Yep. So, and, and there is a reason, you know, the aging, you know, it makes it what it is. So we're uh, we're yeah. looking at things. We had, without the aging, we'd have the the white dog, and I have to say, I'm I'm not get quite a fan <laughs> of the white dog. <laughs> I think the, the barrel helps the white dog a whole lot. Yeah, uh, definitely. It definitely needs to be aged. I mean, it is a, uh, uh, it's a raw it's, spirit in that form. Yeah. But the barrel really t 
tames it and brings the character and color and a lot of flavor to the bourbon. Yeah, and that's what is great about whiskey, aging. Mm -hmm. I'm amazed that you have so much ages written on the bottles because uh, in the in the in the Scotch community we we all experience now the, mm -hmm. the NAS bottles, the knowledge yeah. statement. Some bottles. of them are the Basil Hayden right now is actually that age statement is going to go away. Uh, it's going to go away. Oh, and it's what a pity. But the thing is, we're still using. The, all it does is just loosens up inventory that's close to eight years old. Oh, okay. You know, if you say eight years old, every drop has to be eight years old. Obviously. Where you can find some barrels that are seven years, six months, that still have the same taste profile, depending on where they're stored in the rack house. So it opens up more barrels to be bottled. So that's where the the no age statement is. Uh, it's it's actually, it's, it's already come on Basil Hayden, but we've experienced no one uh, complaining. Okay. They're seeing a difference because we're still mingling the barrels together. Okay. And you're getting a good balance and flavor is still... Uh, as long as the people get a good product, I think they will appreciate it. Right. I mean, it, it just unties our hands quite a bit. Okay. Taking the age statement off there. As long as you keep the product profile, taste profile the same, uh, you're still you're still doing good. People who enjoy it, you change it, they will know. And they will let you know about it real quickly. Definitely. For Definitely. sure. <laughs> okay. So... Last but certainly not least, mm -hmm. we have my father's bourbon, Booker's bourbon. You know, this one is bottled mm -hmm. uncut, unfiltered, straight from the barrel. Straight from the barrel? Mm-hmm. Okay. This one has no water added at any point. Uh, so. It gets distilled at... 125 proof or 62 and a half percent that way when it goes into the barrel there's no water added we cannot put any of the bourbons in the barrel at higher than 62 and a half percent okay so anything gets distilled higher you have to take demineralized water and bring it down to this that strength so this one gets nothing added at all at the at the filling in the cask you add no water none at all still okay um And when then when come, you take it out, it has no that water percentage. added either. Oh, that is interesting. I select the <laughs> barrels. Dad selected the barrels up until he passed away. Okay. Today I select the barrels that goes into each batch of Booker's bourbon, and uh, it's something that I take a lot of pride in because it is my father's bourbon. Uh, that is his handwriting. The original batch he hand wrote the labels. Oh, nice. That's why they picked up on the handwriting. Okay, very, uh, very nice. And it was something that we did as an experiment. We gave the first batch of bottles, most of them away, to our distributor friends to see if there was a market for high-end bourbons. This was back in 1987. 1987, okay. That was before any of these super premiums were ever created. And so doing this, Dad opened the door to a whole new category of bourbon super premium bourbons. He went with the small batch style of making where you mingle the barrels together for mm -hmm. consistency. Okay. His good friend Elmer T. Lee went the single barrel route with Blanton's. Oh yeah. That was all in the same time frame. So how big is a small batch? How many barrels are we looking at? Today we're dumping right at 500 barrels. 500 barrels. To a batch. In the early days, 200. 200. Okay, so we are looking at, let's say, thousands, that's like 2,000 uh, bottles or? Probably, yeah. yeah. It depends on how much angels share. Ah, okay. You know, you're losing 4% a year. So, you know, that comes into play what's left in the barrel. Uh, with bookers, whatever's in the barrel, that's what you get. <laughs> okay. With the others, we add a little water to bring them down to the bottling strength. So your number of bottles will increase. But with this one, Whatever comes out of the barrels is what goes into the bottles, and that's what we get. So we're looking at a, a bit even darker color then because well, we don't add water? The, these barrels get stored in the sweet spot of the rack house, the center cut. The center cut, okay. Which is the fifth and sixth floors of these nine-story buildings. Okay. So you get the color is a good balance. You don't get barrels that are stored up high. You get a lot more color comes from that barrel. Mm -hmm. Barrels stored down low 
don't get as much. You'll see the strength on the upper stored barrels will go up. The strength on the lower tiered barrels will go down. This goes in and stays relatively the same. Okay. Now you got your big vanilla notes, just like we've been talking about. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. This is, this is a bit stronger. I can I can already smell that. You know, and Dad's theory on this bourbon was to allow you, the consumer, to reduce it to the strength they want to drink it. You know, okay. you can take just a little splash of water, put it in there, and open it up. It'll bust up the molecules and really change the whole experience. Or maybe a cube of ice, put it in there, and swirl it as the ice melts and releases the water, mm -hmm. it will open it up a little bit. But dad's theory was for the consumer because all these have had water added to bring them down to these bottling strengths. This one, he allows you to add the water if you choose. That is, that is nice. I think most of the people will taste it first time. They will taste it straight away. And then you can always take a taste and then add a little splash to see what it does to it because mm -hmm. it does change the character of it. Definitely. Mm. It's sweeter at the start than I, I thought. Oh, but now you, you really fa taste see, the... When your saliva gets in it, but if you take just a tiny drop, okay, just the, the experiment here, you'll see that it greatly changes it, opens it up, and makes the bouquet change considerably. And I'll swirl it around a little bit. And then now if you look, smell the nose, you'll see that it's, uh, it's opened up. And it's even more aromatic with just that little bit of water. Yeah. Yeah, I like the, the high strength ones where, that you can open up. Because uh, when, if you take, uh, let's say, a 40% one, add water, it opens it up as well. But the chance of diluting it too much so you have Very a water, watery substance right. is just a bit too... And if you add any ice to it, it keeps getting diluted as the ice melts. You know, In this particular batch, I have to look, I can't see without my glasses. This is 128.9, so it's 64.45%. Ah, so this is always always varying from it varies from, from batch, batch to, to batch. batch. Okay, so that's the thing. You have to look at the little sticker mm -hmm. to see. Uh, the sticker tells you tells you the age of the youngest barrels in the batch. That's the age statement on there. I'm gonna get my glasses back out again. Okay, the youngest barrels in this particular batch were seven years, seven months, and thirteen days old. Oh, okay, so you, you're actually allowed to write the, the specific the yeah. age if on you're it. you're going to state the age, the youngest barrel in the batch is the age of the entire batch. Yeah, I, I always thought that you had to round it to the... No, no rounding. The, no, 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 okay, no, no. You don't have to. Okay, no, that's the, the exact age of the youngest barrel would be... Now, you could call this seven-year-old. You can call it seven-year-old. But you can't call it eight. Yeah. Yeah, the, the rules for bourbon are quite strict, right? Yes, sir. But Very strict. I, I like it that you keep the rules for bourbon quite strict because... Uh, nowadays, you know what you're getting in the bottle. Definitely. Nowadays you have all these additives and stuff. No, right. no additives in here. No, no, and that's the thing. Everybody has to play by those rules. Definitely. So, I mean, mm -hmm. if you see a bottle that has bourbon, if it's made here in the United States, they follow the same rules as I follow. And you can compare bottle to bottle by reading the labels. Definitely. So yeah, I, I think we're we're through. Um, thank you for having us. Great whiskeys you have here. Great thank you. Bourbons. Thank you. So I, I highly recommend you you check out all the bourbons yourself. And thank you for watching. Thank you for My having pleasure. us. And if you like this video, then please share it with your friends. Um, thank Come you visit for watching. us. Oh yeah! If you're ever in the states, come, come visit the Steel House. Yeah, it's it's been great being here. All all the visitor center and all the distillery is great to see. Tours and everything. Everybody yeah. gets a tour, <laughs> not just you. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Thank you for watching.